welcome everybody to episode five, season two of Whistle Kick Live. I am Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host, joined sort of through the Ethernet, the interwebs. Uh, Gabe Sioux, who does an amazing job behind the scenes and controls the boards via via the internet across three time zones. That's that's how we do this. He does a great job, and I, I really appreciate him and all the fun stuff that's going to happen today. I don't, I don't even know when we put these together. He's like, do you want them? I'm like, I don't know, whatever. You, you surprise me, because it's more fun that way. You have fun being surprised. Why shouldn't I be surprised with what's going on? Although sometimes with trivia, we disagree. And I, there was a correction. I don't know if you noticed it. There was a correction from last time. I'm not even going to tell you what it was. If you missed it last time, you'll just have to wait. You'll have to wonder what's going on. So uh, we've got a good show for you. We've got some guests coming up. We've got a big announcement at the end. And you may notice the lighting. Can you see the lighting? Do you notice that there is no glare off my head in the same way that there has been? Because there are three, one, two, three big lights to go with the, the microphones and the cameras and the arms and the monitors on. I, I am, I have recorded a number of things in a number of studios over the years. Uh, the monstrosity that is becoming my office is easily the most complex. I have a pile of wires right here that I'm not going to show you because it's embarrassing. And there's just there's just wires everywhere. And I could do something to try to clean them up, but why? Why would I do that? Because I'm just going to disconnect these things. How do I get back to trying to close this I don't know anyway I can't I can't see I'm trying to get back to people's comments but I'm not getting them so I don't know I don't know and that makes me sad all right oh there it is I can do it now okay wow looks good and sounds good people are talking <laughs> Andrew's giving me a hard time for the backdrop the backdrop that has not been ironed because why would I do that that seems silly to me. Why is this not? There we go. All right. I need to be able to see Gabe. So um, that's the end of my monologue. Every evening show has to have a monologue. That's my monologue. I spend half of it just kind of monologuing. Stacey says, Velcro is your friend. Not with this, these all these wires. There's so many wires. It's a multitude of wires. And if you were not in the chat before the show you missed out on the discussion of the theme song and why we should have a theme song and what it should be and i submitted my off the cuff response stacy had a better one so yeah the fun things that happen during the live show uh let's uh let's move on to our first topic which is a, a throwback to some of the things that we did this time last year, which, you know, it's a long time ago, a year ago. We were all still optimistic and positive and weren't infected with illness. The myth of having to register your hands as deadly weapons started as a publicity stunt by the boxer Joe Lewis. Not Joe Lewis. Somebody remind me, I've got something to mention, to, to hint about regarding the, the, the martial arts Joe Lewis. He would bring the police to his pre-fight press conferences in order to intimidate his opponents by having the police register his hands as deadly weapons. And that man, Joe Lewis, fought professionally from 1934 to 1951. That's a long career. 17 years as a pro fighter? Whew. There's probably some traumatic brain injuries going on there. Sure. That's rough. <laughs> How much can a person really learn from online instruction? This was a conversation that we had a year ago. And you know what? I'm sure I was really down on it. I'm sure I was diplomatic, but down on it. My opinion has grown considerably because people found new and creative ways. And everybody's favorite game. Oh, here comes the yawning from talking too much. But I've got a whole bunch of water. If you were attacked right now, wherever you are, what's the closest thing you can grab to defend yourself? Now, if I remember correctly, Gabe, when we did this, 
this was back before when I wasn't doing the show in the office. I was doing it out in front of the wood stove. Whole different dynamic. I always had a sweaty back. I mean, I have a sweaty back now because of this monstrosity that I'm wearing, which I want everybody to acknowledge this. This was available uh, at whistlecake.com for a year and no one bought one. It was very sad. I have the only one of these in existence. Look at this. Look at this thing. It's the warmest thing you could ever have. It's a blanket that you wear. It's like a Snuggie. It's kind of like a Snuggie, but your arms work the right way. You don't have to put it on backwards. So if you were attacked right now, what's the closest thing you can grab to defend yourself? Now, I have far more options available to me being that I am in the office. I have a retired knife that I use as a letter opener. This was my first favorite kitchen knife. There, there's, there's somebody in the Zoom. What time are we doing this? We're not doing this yet, right? No? Okay. I have this incredibly heavy water bottle that even has a handle. Like, I, I think I could probably do some... Can you hear that? Oh, here's the mic. I could do some damage to that thing. What else do I have? Um... I mean, I don't know what else I would need. And I've got this uh, Whistle Kick Grand Championship medal from 2016 that I could, I mean, if I could put a, put a rope on it, I could, I could really, I could do some damage with that. Do some damage with that for sure. In the chat, Andrew says, last year, by the stove, your answer was the heavy pot on the stove. That would have worked, and that is a bizarrely good memory, my friend. Stacy says, pens and scissors for my desk cup. Dennis says, AirPods. <laughs> Matt says, fork and a baby. I really hope those are two separate implements, and it's not like baby on a fork that you would be using. Uh, Matt and I are... Matt, Matt's other half, Jenny, says, Matt and I are eating. Oh, I lost it. We have forks and knives. He would grab the fork. I would grab the baby. All right. Well, it works. It all works. Andrew doesn't think it works. Andrew thinks that Dennis is in trouble with AirPods. I don't know. I, I know I know Dennis well. I bet he could I bet he could do some damage with some AirPods. So I it was not too long, just about a year ago, that a little over a year ago, that I released my first real book. The Martial Artist Handbook came out December of 2019. We've sold a, a bunch of copies. And fun enough, uh, there are copies of this that make it into bookstores. Amazon's got some program, and I, I just see it on the, the sales reports that it's probably been like a, close to a dozen copies have been sent out to bookstores. I don't know if anybody bought them. If you ever see this in a store, please take a picture and send it to me because that would be super duper cool. And if you want autographed copies, you can get by autographed copies at whistlekick.com. I, I have a handful on hand at any time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so speaking of books, I wrote another one. Because why not? Because I don't have enough to do. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to write a novel. I'll have it done in a month. That was a little aggressive. It took me 10, we 10, 10 weeks, not 10 days. I wrote this novel. It's called Faith. Uh, it has nothing to do with religion. But it's the first book in a series uh, called The Katana Chronicles. Yes, that will become relevant as we get further along. How soon will I write book two? Uh, depends on how well it sells. If we sell a bajillion copies, I'll write the follow-up tomorrow. If we sell fewer copies, I will write it less soon. So let's welcome somebody that we've met on martial arts radio if you listen to martial arts radio but has how do i want to say it has never been on this show but has kind of been on this show indirectly for a long time so let's welcome gabe's other half jenny seal you are here if i understand correctly because of the the whistle kick related project that you're working on and, and you know gabe sent me an email and said you're going to come on to talk about that. That yes. is that that's what you're here for, right? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's up to whatever you. you want me to talk about, but yeah, that's what I've been uh, 
That's what I've been trying to burn the midnight oil on right now. So yeah. Okay. All right. Um, do you need something with any desk or did I bump the mouse? You're good. Okay. We're good. All right. Um, yeah. So it was like two years ago that we finished the first draft of the master hopkick origin story, right? I do not know. Maybe it was 18 months. And then I said, Hey, you want to work on some master hopkick stuff? And you said, yeah, but I want to, I want to redo that book. I have, yeah. some, I have some, I have some issues with that book, some continuity, historical accuracy and other, uh, very nitpicky, but I say that in the best possible way. Issues. I was going to say, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm all about authenticity in the places where it can be. Um, no, just when I read it, it's good. And it's got, you know, like I say, it's got really good bones. It's got really good potential. But as I read it, I went, man, there's a few things that there are people who know way more than I do about some of these historical things and and characters and i just wouldn't want whistle kick to put out this and then have somebody else come in and go you don't know what you're talking about do you know and so yeah and so uh so yeah i was let's see it was in august that i started writing i think uh -huh. um so yeah we talked what, a little bit that, and what's that process been like you know revising that that book story I guess. it's been kind of fascinating it's been a process of growth for me i've learned a ton um i would say it's been a process of growth for me um allowing myself to change things because i didn't start it and i didn't write it and i remember at first going oh man so i want to correct some things i want to change some things but how much am i actually able to do how much is this mine how much is this yours and how much is this the original author? Like, what what can I do and what can't I do? And so uh, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a growth process. I feel like starting out, I was very hesitant, very nervous about what I changed and how I changed it. And over time, I feel like it's become my own, and I've gotten a better feel for where it needs to go and how to keep kind of how to keep that uh, origin story in there. Yeah, and and just expound on it and make it make it a little hopefully better but it, it, yeah. I, I think this is why so many people when they when they write something fictional they go to a fictional place yeah because then you're not bound by reality and that was something that that i um intentionally avoided in most cases you know if, if you you know this thing that we just talked about. Yes. Um, yes. Congratulations, thank by you. the way. Thank you. That's fantastic. Um, it, I don't say where it is, you know, just right. beyond it's like it's New England, you know, and, and, and because the moment I say anything specific, it gives people to, something to push back on. Like they, they need to be able to accept the story. And so you're going the exact opposite direction and saying, okay, <laughs> we just need to get rid of all the things that people could push back on by making it completely historically accurate and yet accommodating for a fictional character. Right. And that's the balance that's really hard to strike sometimes. And that's why I feel like I haven't been able to just bust it out. You know, I, I wish, I wish very much I had been able to just get it all written in a couple of months. But as I looked deeper, trying to figure out, okay, so we've got this historical fact but we don't want to stick necessarily to that. We don't want it to have to be exactly that historical moment, right? We want people to be able to relate to it. Sure. But we're set in history. So, like for example, one of the one of the places that our character goes is is Australia. Um, Australia is a big country, right? And Australia itself has a ton of diversity. Yes. Uh, I didn't want to pick a town and say, well, now I have to figure out how to live there and have all of the exact details of everyone who ever lived in that town and how that would look. Mm -hmm. But we can pick Australia and say, all right, well, there's some specifics we have to keep in mind. Um, you know, so trying to stay within that context of reality, but not 
um, so box ourselves in that it only applies, you know, in sure. one in one dimension, I guess. So yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, can you give us an example of something in the story that maybe has changed? Because we have sold some copies, right? Some people have read the first version of the story, and it, and it is available if you want to if you want to pick it up. I think it's just a Kindle version. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, it's not long enough for a, for a paperback version. But you know, what's an example of something that's changed in the version of the story that you're working on? So one thing that's changed is uh, so historically. Um, our character, John, he wouldn't have been able to come to the States straight away on a scholarship to study. Um, and the original story has him leaving his home in the Solomon Islands to come straight to New York and uh, study high school and college there in New York. And then kind of the story progresses from there. Um, and that was just not possible uh, at the time period that we that it's set in. Uh, it just wasn't something that he wouldn't have been able to get a visa there. Yeah. And so we took him to Australia. Um, and then we take him after Australia, we bring him to the States. A few more years gone by, uh, borders had opened up, things like that. Now, those aren't things we're actually going to talk about in the book. Um, but if there's somebody who's reading and they go, you know, I'm from whatever part of the world and that wouldn't have happened. Right. Now we have, right. now we, we've just shifted awesome. that a little bit. Awesome. Uh, we've got to wind up this chat yeah. uh, but I'm trying to think of what people would want to know I guess they're oh it's 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 telling me I've frozen yes I've frozen can you still hear me I can hear you Weird. you froze a little while ago huh and I, I didn't why. know if that was just me or that was no no apparently it's it's everybody huh I don't know well I'm oh, sorry I should have said something nah there's nothing I can do about it uh, <laughs> Not, not you can blame with, me. There you go. <laughs> no, um, we're we're going to blame Nathan because he's in he's in the waiting room. Uh, there so you we're go. Gonna, we're going to blame him. Uh, no. But do you have an idea when 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 this might be ready? I, I don't. Oh, want, I'm not going to hold you to it. But are you half? Yeah. How about this? Are you halfway? Are you? Yeah. You're halfway? Yeah. We're okay. we're further than halfway for sure. Cool. Um, and uh, it's mostly filling out the story trying to keep trying to keep the pace steady throughout the whole thing that's one of the things i'm trying really hard to keep the nice. pace steady um so yeah i mean man i have I'm homeschooling my three kiddos we're teaching karate we're doing all the things right so Busy. uh I get it. hopefully within the next month or two nice. i'll have the whole thing done nice. so I'm, I'm pumped i'm pumped to see it so yeah I'm thanks well. for coming on everybody stay stay tuned and yeah. uh yeah We'll do it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you back in the waiting room and see if we can't fix my video on this. All right. Sounds good. Take care. All right. Thanks. You too. All right. Here I'm switching back to this, and uh, see if I can fix this. There we go. It's fixed already. That's how good I am. I just had to turn it off and on again because that's. I mean. Is that not the solution to most technology issues? You turn it off and you turn it on again. Um, <laughs> at least you froze in a decent pose. He was trying to highlight Jenny. Yeah, Laura, he's not eating a microphone. That's a that's a, uh, a reference to Julius's selection of last month's still for use as the episode graphic where the um let's just say it wasn't the best photo of me ever uh i've seen better i've seen better nathan if you can hear us uh we're gonna we're gonna go for a few minutes then we're gonna bring you on matt saying is it plugged in yes that's the other half of it is it plugged in and have you tried turning it off and on again in fact there's a wonderful show uh, I'm not a big fan of British comedy typically, but there's a great show. It's available on Netflix called The IT Crowd. And that is a recurring joke throughout. So uh, we've got some topics from Facebook. Let's let's do a couple minutes of these. What do we got? If your instructor had a pull string, what would the phrases be? Oof. Um, depends on the instructor, but I'm thinking of things like, come on. 
you can get those stances lower or all right just 10 more or we'll move on when you get it right let's see i i've, I've got a feeling some of you all had had some responses for this richard said let's see if that's true right before we clap and then practice techniques andrew says mine would be okay once more i always tell my students that whenever i say once more i'm always lying jared says no too much muscle uh of course we should know that jared is an aikido practitioner in part uh marcia says think about it in a different way daniel says just relax ed says one bend your knee two switch sides three one more time and Kara says, right foot. <laughs> yes. What top three qualities would you use to describe the quote unquote ideal martial artist? Um, I would say patient. I would say dedicated. And I would say humble. Those would be my three. Some top answers from the Martial Arts Fun and Friends group, which you should all check out. Always learning, always teaching, always humble, uh, driven, open-minded, compassionate, integrity, perseverance, humility, humble, confident, honest, honorable, humble, adaptive. So there's humble coming up a few times. Helper, healer, hungry, student, teacher, leader, and possibly the best one, and I wanna know who put this in, sleeveless gi, mirror tape staff, Techno music blasting from Walkman. That's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good stuff. I like that. What's your biggest martial arts regret? <sighs> that's a tough one. There's a part of me that wants to, to say that, you know, there was a, there was kind of a dark time um, when I was on my own for two years and, not formally training and saying that, you know, I should have broken out of that sooner, but I, I think I needed that. And I think especially now where I'm at, I needed that perspective because there are things to, that come up related to that. So my biggest martial arts regret, um, I don't know. I'm not big on regrets. That's why I'm struggling here. So let's see what other people said. Many people said not starting earlier. And I would absolutely have said that if I hadn't started at four. One person said none. A few said quitting or taking a break. Many said they fooled around too much or didn't take their training seriously. I guess I could put myself in that camp. As a kid, I definitely fooled around. I, you know, I had my moments. I was a kid. I was a kid. I was around other kids. It's going to happen. What's the most random thing you've intentionally broken or offered to break? Oh, man. Uh, doors. Wood. Printers. There was a pile of broken printers that didn't quite fit in the boxes and they needed to go in. And there were a lot of axe kicks taking off paper trays. It's kind of like office space, but uh, without the getaways music in the background matt says car at a community day police or a fire department had a junker car and people could donate for a few swings with a sledgehammer three of us got together from the school to try and kick off a door and a bumper uh gabe i'm assuming this is you a few years ago i witnessed a single car rollover in which the driver was trapped i ended up kicking in a window which allowed him to crawl out whoa that's awesome that's really cool Jenny's in the chat. Her biggest regret, allowing anxiety to get in the way of my training. I was a bad student, a bad role model when anxiety was in control. I could see that. All right. We're going to bring on. All right. Let's bring on Nathan Porter. He's been a a, a friend and, and I don't know if I want to say a fan, but a supporter. And, uh, and he and I already talked this morning. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, what's going on, man? How are you? What's happening? How you doing? I'm well. And yourself? Yeah, doing all right. Just wrapped up classes, so nice. ready to rock. Nice. What is what is going on with this bow and arrow over your head? Oh, I never saw that before. No, you know, I, uh, <laughs> that was, you know, this is. You're gonna you're a, gonna I, tell me like, oh, this is from like 14th century Nottingham. It belonged to Robin Hood. I keep like it in that? my it's dojo. 
<laughs> yeah, no, but you know, this was a gift from uh, from Henry way back. Oh, really? And, uh, oh, cool. Yeah, it was, some, it was some competition event, and uh, yeah, so gave that to me, and yeah, pretty cool. Nice. I used to have uh, I used to have another one very similar, but um, yeah, you know, have you ever seen those Mongolian those uh, Mongolian bows? Now those are pretty wild. If you can't get your hands on one of those, no, are, are those <laughs> the super big ones? Uh, like a, like an English longbow. The other ones when um, you see that the horns kind of coming off, mm -hmm. so you can really uh, yeah, pretty yeah. wild stuff. <laughs> nice. Yeah, pretty much anything Mongolian is crazy. Like like yeah. Mongolian metal. Have you ever have you are you familiar with Mongolian metal music of today? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. guys are nuts. They do like the throat <laughs> singing, but with like power chords. It's it's in it's intense. Yeah. All that death metal thing going on. Yeah, oh, wild stuff. Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> so how were classes? Classes go well? Classes went well. You know, I mean, we just experienced a little uh, snowstorm, a little yeah. rising storm, but uh, <laughs> but it was good. You know, a lot of people made it out, and um, yeah, I just wrapped up the adults. We only had about six. But uh, they're all dedicated and glad they didn't slip on the ice. And, uh, yeah, rocking and rolling. Good. How much snow did you get? What did we get? We probably got about, about 15, 15, 18. You know, it's a lot. Yeah. 15 to 18 <laughs> inches. There, there are people watching this right now who have uh, never seen that much snow. Wow. Okay. Or at least listening. You know, I don't, I don't know. Know, Must like, be nice. We got some people. <laughs> You've got more than we have. I just I saw, I saw somebody put up a graphic this morning. You know, you guys in Massachusetts have received way more snow this year than we have here in Vermont, which is just mm -hmm. silly. It's silly. You don't want it. Give it to us. We need it for the ski mountains that no one's allowed to come to. <laughs> but you are here today to talk about helping students find their passion in the martial arts yeah. because you you are someone who continues to re i don't know if reinventing yourself is is fair to say but you utilize and and exist in the martial arts sphere in a few different ways and you just seem sure. to be always fired up about all of those things all the time <laughs> yeah i mean so instructor burnout is such a big mm. thing you yeah. know and and it, it, it kills the class, you know, and it, that's one of the big things you can go into, um, you know, is it a hobby or a job, hobby or career kind of thing. And, you know, and when you are making that switch, of course, instructors, they go through this all in and, uh, and it, it wears on them, you know, and there's a lot riding on it when you're first getting involved and, and, you know, you have to do things a certain way. And because of that, it takes the passion out, you know, right. so to get that passion back instilled, uh, into your training and everything else. I mean, because you, you have to, you have to be passionate in what you do. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I teach a lot more youth kids. I mean, I mentioned I had six kids, but I taught, uh, sorry, six adults, but I taught 50 something kids today, you know, and, oh, wow. and, that, and that's with limited, uh, you know, limited spacing. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, but if you're not passionate about what you do and you're around kids, it's going to pick right up and they're just going to be, they're gone, you know, and, and that's, and. Or they chew you, you up. Really, yeah. Yeah. You know, and you can fake it till you make it, you know, and, and you grow into that, but you know, what really helps me and, and this is probably uh, how I keep reinventing, you know, my own training uh, methods is, is exactly that I, in my style, you know, so everyone has this, this style, this system that they're learning, but you yourself need a personal method, mm. right? For said style. And a lot of times that's going to, that's going to put something into your art that's yours, right? And that's, that's just for you. And in martial arts, we know it's all about giving back and we're constantly teaching and teaching and teaching. But when you, when you take a moment to self-reflect on a method for yourself based on your style, Oh wow, that kind of gives another spark, and that can lead to other thoughts. And, give, give me, and... give me some examples of that method. All right. Well, you know, you get that um, when you get that kind of palm to forehead moment of oh, of course, that's what they meant. Uh, everybody describes everything slightly different. So if you're, let's say, a taekwondo practitioner, right, and you're you're comfortable in Korean systems, right, and you go okay, you can kind of branch out a little bit, but then let's say you you pick up, um, let's say a Muay Thai, you know, uh, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know, it's, I have a 
I'm a martial artist. I can relate to this. Mm -hmm. But the way that they describe their kicking methods is very different, you know, and for different reasons. I mean, in the sport area of, of the of the arts, yeah, there's different rules associated. But all of a sudden, you are taking the same kick, and it is now put into a different way for you to learn it. Sure. And that, that gives you a different method for implementing your technique. So now if you're teaching, say, a roundhouse kick, all right? All right, I'm going to use my instep. I'm going to use my ball. I'm going to use my shin. I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to use my my knee with the with the whole leg behind it. I'm going to utilize my hip for the motion. Yeah. Um, you have all these different ways of now teaching said roundhouse kick. So how much more interesting did that roundhouse kick become? And you know, all of a sudden that sparks into everything else. But you have to give that passion forward too. You know, yeah. if kids if kids always see or even adults and they see that oh wow it's if they see that okay it's a roundhouse kick and and you're not putting that forward, or if you're teaching little ones, hey, this is cool because they're gonna, oh, this is a cool, you know, they just they just kind of go along with it. Now, the, the other thing too is this. Uh, let's say you're teaching kids, right? And you're looking for passion. I'm feeling good because I'm looking up all these different arts and now I'm gonna put it in and you know, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a hook punch out of the uh, Filipino systems, you know, old dirty boxing sets instead of the classic hook. That's just gonna be my method. That's what I'm gonna be working on, right? And, um, but there's a lesson there, right? And there's something that I can put into my system and my style, it's, you know, it is what it is. But if I'm teaching kiddos, stories will help with the passion. If let's say my style is discipline, right? And I can't put that passion out there. It just doesn't go with my teaching method of what I'm doing. It's not disciplined if I chose, you know, there's just, it's a different teaching style, right? Um, I don't want to put that forward in my method of whatever I'm doing. So Sounds what you do is you, you can, but you have to have that, path. you have to be passionate about what you do. So you transfer the passion, right? So you do it in the form of a story that has some passion to it. So that takes it off of the discipline aspect of the instructor enrolls it into something to grow the passion of the student or you know hierarchy is an interesting thing in the arts you can always talk about your instructor that you're passionate about yeah. if i'm no longer kicking and i and i've had instruction from bill superfoot wallace right everybody i think everybody has stories about um superfoot and yeah how how passionate is he about his striking and is he it loves what he does still so so instantly just by sharing that wow that's going to roll into everybody else yeah. and it takes it off of me so i can still be me and instill something else in the other students yeah. you know so that that really helps out too um passion's a fire you know it, it's it, contagious and i've i've noticed there there are certain schools that i've attended and everybody's just kind of er, they're all you know the instructors going through the motions the students going through the motions and sometimes it just takes a little bit of a spark and mm -hmm. because it's contagious now everybody's yeah. elevated elevated nobody's gonna let it go they're all yeah. fired up they're doing the same stuff but they're all showing up finally you know they're there <laughs> ready so yeah yeah and it's you know and it, I, it's all about that instructor too, because yes. some of them will be like, well, you know, how can you, you know, this is a serious self-defense situation. Yeah. You shouldn't be smiling. You got to take this serious. You know, there's that whole side of things too in, in martial arts and fighting. You know, I mean, all right, if you're training for, uh, you know, a fight or, all right, you're doing some serious uh, aggression tactics right. and you're putting in these, you know, the tone has to shift. So how can we be laughy and smiley and happy when we're trying to get our head into something as close to self-defense as we can? And um, and that's that's a really that's a really tricky approach. Passion and doesn't have to be fun. Mm, yeah, you know that there. If you're, I think if you're really passionate about something, there's going mm. to be an enjoyment of it. But it doesn't necessarily right. mean it has to be fun, smiley, giggly, cracking mm. jokes. Right, yeah. like you, you would, you and I, we could, we could spar, and we could mm -hmm. have a heck of a lot of fun, and it, it could be playful and joking, and you know, closer to a game of tag. But we could also go, 
much much harder. You know, even even removing context uh, contact from the equation, we could make it a much more intense sparring match, and still really enjoy it. But we're far more. I shouldn't say more, but we're we're engaged differently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's it. The passion can go into the focus. You yeah. know, and and that's the big thing. And uh, that that kind of transition has to be acknowledged. You know, yes. and then you can kind of uh, like, hey, all right, we're gonna do this. We can get fired up for it. And all right, or you know, that kind of that. Uh, you know, I mean. You, you watch a coach's speech from a football movie or yep. a basketball movie and you're, oh, you get all great, fired up. You totally watch a, great example. Some, some epic movie, you know, and oh, here we go. You know, there's the passion for the focus of the activity, you know. And yeah, that's what that's, it's a- it's a good place for us to end. We got we got to move on to other segments. That's, oh, that's, we, I, I know we could you and I could talk about this for for an hour or two at least. I have oh. no doubt. But I appreciate you coming on. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's always great to see you, man. You too, man. Yeah. We'll t- we'll talk again soon, bud. Definitely. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Take care, everyone. All and, right. Uh, have a good one. Cheers. Be well. Always good to talk to Nathan. Such a good guy. What's going on in here? I have two few. There's there's insanity going on in the chat. I'm just I'm not even. I'm not even going to read back. I can already tell it's just nuts. All right. So this might be my favorite segment, or at least one of uh, story time with Matt. So first off, this photo is amazing. So there's Matt. There's Jenny. Uh, that's the other Jenny. We have two Jennies at Whistlekick. And and this is other Jenny, Jenny and Matt versus Jenny and Gabe. Uh, they both end the spelling of their name with an I which I object to because that's the non-traditional spelling. And, and the least they could do is have different spellings of their name, but they didn't. So um, that's all sarcastic because I think the world of both of them. But we've got five stories today. So let's, let's move on. I'm going to read these to you. These are great. So this came in from Gabe. In our school, we have a family with five girls who all start at the same time. Occasionally, I mix up their names and one day joked that I would just call them number one, two, three, four, and five. So one day they came to class wearing name tags with number one, two, three, four, and five on them. I never lived that down. It's a great story. Also from Gabe. At a tournament, I broke my hand in a sparring match, but I won my division. The the only other guy in my grand champion division was a good friend of mine who had re-injured his knee. So we both decided to bow out rather than risk further injury. When we explained our situation to the registration table, one of the judges overheard us and took matters into his own hands and had us play rock, paper, scissors for it. He grabbed two other judges and we proceeded with the match. I ended up winning and now I have a grand champion trophy for winning rock, paper, scissors. Nice. This one's from Andrew. At 16 years old, I was a green belt and at my first tournament, I ended up placing second in my kata division, which I was totally psyched about. I was so happy to get a trophy. However, I spent the entire rest of the tournament trying to track down any girl who also placed second in any division. Why? I didn't want my trophy to have a girl on the top. It's dumb, but I did find someone. I have at least one trophy at home that I ended up with a girl trophy. It's okay. It's okay, Andrew. You can have a girl trophy. Girls have boy trophies at most tournaments, to be honest. Is this a picture that, yeah, this would, this would be it. That's, are we sure that's a girl? Oh no, that would be the one you swapped for. So that, that's the, that's, that is the male trophy topper submitted by Garrett. I was at a tournament about 12 years ago where I had the privilege of judging adult creative weapons forms. I despised this and didn't think anyone hated this more than me. Then I met this girl that did, and she was cracking the same jokes I was. There was a guy that did maracas in a forum. Seriously, took maracas and did a traditional forum while shaking these things. Maybe he lost a bet or something. Anyway, she busted up laughing halfway through, as did I, and that was it. Best friends ever since. I married her about eight years later. We're still together and laugh about it. You know, that what? because I, I read through these just um, a couple days ago just to make sure they didn't need any adjustment uh, for length or whatever. And at the beginning of this one, I was a little sad. Like, oh, you know, like, why is somebody doing a maracas for him? But then, you know, the fact that it brought two people together and they got married, like, that's pretty adorable. 
can't get mad at that. And our last one, this one's from Matt. At a tournament many years ago, I was a second Don and tied for first place in weapons with a fourth Don. Oh, excuse me. We both performed again and they still couldn't decide a winner. They decided to give it to the fourth Don because he was senior in rank. That's crap. When they said it loud enough that we heard it, he, the fourth Don, turned and told the judges that they were wrong and that wasn't a reason someone should win. Good. So he gave me first place. Yes. Every one of those judges needs to be slapped. That's, ugh. I know that's not supposed to be the takeaway from that story, but, um, yeah. <laughs> Tennis is in the chat saying he does an amazing AirPods cut. I bet you do, my friend. Uh, what we got now? What's next? Random thoughts and stories from my life as they relate to the martial arts. Okay. This could go anywhere. So this happened a few days ago. Are these all from you, Gabe? Okay, these are from Gabe. I was talking to a friend about different styles of karate. He mentioned Kyokushin karate. He said, kill your shin? What's that? A better mistake could not have been made. It's absolutely true. That's <laughs> that's brilliant. For my day job, I work for a freight company. One day while moving trailers around using what we call a yard goat, I saw this label. Safety instructions, emergency exit, kick out windshield. I'm not saying I'm wishing for an emergency, but if there ever is one, I'm just saying my training perfectly suits me for the situation. That's all. A yard goat. That looks like a fun... How fast do those things go? Probably not fast enough to go on the road. Four. Forty? Forty. Okay. <laughs> I also punch random things everywhere I go. Me for no reason. Yes. This is this is why about half of my training right now is punching surfaces in my house. The refrigerator, the walls, the corners, the random salute. Oh, I need more oxygen. The random saloon doors into my laundry room. Those are those are great because you don't want to hit them too hard, but they swing. Perfect. Perfect for punching. We recently got a new batch of students. A new batch of new students, and this is the face I often make watching them be better than me. <laughs> it's a meme of a cat. The face you make when a white belt does a technique better than you on their first day. It's a very uh, judgmental cat. All cats are judgmental, but especially this one. I like it. All right, rapid fire trivia. Hold on, I gotta get ready. This is next time. I'm not bringing like a jug of water. This just feels ridiculous. Also, you can hear how much water I've drank because that thing was almost full at the beginning. All right, I have 20 questions. Answer as quickly as I can. Read each question out loud before giving my answer. All right, that means. I have to read fast. Did did the person I'm playing against also have to read the questions or just answer them? They did. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm ready. Let's do it. Who's my favorite musician? Tupac. That's the wrong direction. Oh, you didn't start the thing. You didn't start the timer. You got to start the timer? Is that what's happening? Are you typing to me? Things are happening. Andrew got 14 right in a minute, 40 seconds. Okay. That's what I have to beat. I'm ready. Who's my favorite musician? Tupac. What does karate mean? Empty hand. Way of the empty hand. What do you call a free form fight that can have multiple opponents? Sparring. Where did Eskrima and Kali originate? Philippines. Name one of the founders of Kaju Kembo. Uh, pass. What are basics called in Japanese? Kihon. What does Shodan mean? First degree. First degree black belt. What nickname is Bill Wallace known by? Superfoot. Where was the American Taekwondo Association founded? I'm going to say Washington, D.C. What does Taekwondo mean? Uh, foot fist way. How many underbelt colors does BJJ have? Uh, white, blue, purple, brown. That's four. Name a style with no strikes. 
Yellow bamboo. What is Osotogari? Uh, is that hip throw in judo? What is the Japanese art of weapons? Kabuto. What does judo mean? Ooh. Way of throwing people. What are Japanese training mats called? Tatami? What do you call a person on whom you demonstrate a technique? Uki in Japanese. Who is the founder of Aikido? Uh, Morahai Ushiba, also called Osensei. What do you call a knife hand strike in karate? A shuto. Uh, what does Shotokan mean? Oof, I don't know. How to do? So in a minute 42, All right, um, so I got number one. My favorite musician is Tupac. I'm glad I got that one right. Karate means empty hand. Yeah, I got that. What do you call a free form? Oh, randori? Yeah. That's, how is that different from sparring, though? Sparring can have multiple people. I'm giving myself that one. Three. Uh, Eskrima and Kali, the Philippines. Yeah, four. Oh, okay, founders of Kajikembo. I don't know any of these names. Uh, Adriano, Emperado, Yilchu, Joe Hulk. Frank Ordonia, or I think Ordonez is how you say that. I've heard that name. And Clarence Chang. Okay, so apparently I need to learn more about Kaji Kembo. Uh, basics in Japanese, Kihon. So that's uh, five. Shodan, first step. I'm taking it. Six. Bill Wallace is super foot. Seven. Omaha, Nebraska for the ATA. No. Uh, Taekwondo, way of the hand and foot. I'll let you decide. Uh, BJJ has four colors. Yep. So what's that? Eight. Uh, style with no strikes. Judo or jujitsu? I also believe yellow bamboo. You didn't say it had to be a good, legitimate, or traditional system. I'm taking it. Nine. A sotogari. Basic hip or leg throw in judo. Ten. Kabuto is Japanese art of weapons. Eleven. Judo means... Oh, gentle way. Okay. Uh, Japanese mats. Tatami. Twelve. You call a person whom you demonstrate a technique. Uki. 13. Uh, founder of Aikido, Mora Hayoshiba. 14. Uh, what do you call it? Knife hand strike, Shudo. 15. What does Shotokan mean? School of Waving Pines. All right. So in, in two more seconds, I got one more than Andrew. So I'm going to take it. I won. It's my show. I mean, it's our show, but I'm going to say I won because I'm on the air. And now, for the first time ever, is this your first time ever, ever? Gabe's going to be on the show. Is this your first time ever, ever? No, you've been on the show. You've been on Martial Arts Radio. Okay, once. First, this is Gabe's first time being on on this show. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put him on. He's getting there. He's going to a completely separate computer. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's going on, man? Oh, not too much. It's uh, it's kind of weird, weird to be on this side of it is, isn't it? The uh, of the camera, I guess. Yeah. And um, you'll notice the camera you usually look at me in is I got a different background. Yes. I'm literally just on the other side of the table. Oh, what is right? Just... <laughs> it's it's we could put Jenny in in your normal chair, and then I could be all kinds of messed up about it. Right. Yeah. So you're you're here for an announcement i am so let's have it well what's happening is I, I gotta preface it by saying we love you jeremy we love all the listeners and supporters of the show yep. um yep. but the big announcement is that next month's episode which is season two episode six will be our 18th episode yep. will be our last one yep we're we're calling oh. it we are. Yeah, it's been a great show. We've had a great run. Um, we've had a great time. It's Nothing fun. wrong. We've, we've worked We've worked out almost all the kinks. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I, forgot to, I forgot to unmute the guests, but you knew exactly what needed to happen. I did. So I, I apologize on behalf of Jeremy to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what more can show? you expect from a guy wearing a blanket? <laughs> Yes. 
but uh, no, like we've we've said, you know, when one door closes, another one yeah. will open, and yep. and it'll lead to something even bigger and better. Yeah, it's so. it's been, it's been a lot of fun. You know, you and I have had the had the chance to work closely for the last year and a half, mm -hmm. and you know, I've gotten to know you really well, and that that's been great. Um, you know, we're, we're, there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of no's and sad faces in the chat right now, which is good, right? We we yes. um, if if everyone in there was indifferent. It would mean that we were ending this too late. Um, but it's time for us to, to try something else, right? You know, I, I, I think it's fair to say that while we enjoy doing this, um, we've taken as far as we can. Yeah. You know, when we, when we have our debriefs when we talk about what to do next time you know we, we've dialed it in pretty well and you know the the technical gear that we've we've brought in and the, and the setup if, if any of you who don't remember the early episodes go back to those early oh, episodes man. compare them they were disaster they were and i, I as, as we were reflecting back on a year ago today i remember back to that first episode um, we said it was going to be an hour long show and you said, send me some topics, send me some things to talk about. And I think the first email I sent you had like three things, one of which you knew nothing about. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is going to be a little bit harder than I anticipated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, one of the things that you and I have talked about, and, and, and I'll share this with, uh, with, with the audience, one of the things that I find interesting is if you look at what we're able to produce and, you know, by we, I, I'm, you know, obviously the lion's share is on you. If we add up all the time that goes into one of these, it's a decent chunk of time, but it is not even remotely close to the amount of time that might go into a, let's call it like a, a, a full on evening show, you know, like, like a prime time late night sort of show, which is kind of what this is modeled after. Mm -hmm. And the standard that we've brought it to with, you know, geographic constraints, you are three time zones away. You are 3,000 miles away from me right now. We've yeah. got that. We've got a budget of zero dollars. <laughs> and we've managed to put together a show that is is fun to do, and it's fun for people watching, and uh, we're being boycotted, and there are now angry faces <laughs> in the chat and you know what I'm glad in a sense that um, that you guys feel this way and it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean anything it just means that right. it's time it's time yeah. for us to, to, to try some other things you know um, is, and I see it a little bit having listened to a lot of your podcast episodes I, I've I've listened to you grow as an interviewer. Um, I started at episode one and listened continuously up through over 400. Wow. And my I changed jobs in there, and so I haven't been able to keep up as much as I'd like. But just to listen to you grow as an interviewer, I see this a little bit like that, where it's it's not bad sometimes in order to grow you have to let go of certain things absolutely and we as martial arts we all know that um and so it's it is a bummer yeah but it will allow you and i and the show and whistle kick whistle kick and everything else to be able to grow in ways that uh, it may not have yeah. if we had continued and, and and let's be honest so the the people in the chat right now who are upset um i have talked to almost all of you in one way or another in the last 48 hours. I'm pretty sure everybody watching right now is engaged with whistle kick in other ways. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that, that the company is going away. Um, right. What we might do, you know, we, we, we may come up with something, you know, in, in a few months, something that's more freeform. You know, we might have a whistle kick hangout. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many ways that we can re-examine this that aren't this structure because the structure is anytime you have a structure it's limiting right and yeah. i think it's important for us to find 
a new structure that allows us both to grow. We've both learned a ton from this. And yeah, it's 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 easy. <laughs> Andrew says, I feel like jumping on the Zoom call and telling them they can't. <laughs> oh, and here's Andrew saying full blown trivia show. Well, it's funny that you say that, Andrew, because Gabe, you and I talked about that. Mm -hmm. that there are other options. You know, we, we know that as an organization, we cannot put together um, multiple evening shows. Like if we had, we, we could, we could have content like every evening and you guys aren't all going to show up. It's going to be too much, right? It's the same reason that at one point we explored, should we have a third episode per week of martial arts radio? And the response was actually no. This is the right, we want two episodes. That's the right amount. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And one thing I will, I will miss greatly about this show is the chance, like you said, just to hang out with people in the chat. Yeah. This has been a great place, a great opportunity for people to get together and to... Okay just to be together as martial artists. I think that's the most important part. I think that's the part that we yeah. need to, not need to, but I think it's the the part that will organically find a way to mm -hmm. continue. Yeah. So uh, those of you that are watching live, those of you who are watching or listening later, please don't be sad. I mean, actually, you know what? I take that back. You're welcome to be sad. I hope <laughs> you are a little sad. It means that you care. It means that you enjoy this show. But I, I hope that you recognize that it it doesn't mean that, that something is ending. It means that there's opportunity for something else you compare it to your training. You know, if you want to get better at anything, you have to stop doing things the way that you were doing them. And that can be scary and sad and frustrating and all kinds of emotions, but yeah. Sorry. There's, there's so many things on the horizon right now. There's so many things going on that, that you guys don't even know about. And no, that none of them have to do with me wearing a blanket. <laughs> so, speaking of wearing things you're not the only one wearing a whistle kick hey look at that it's a whistle kick gi yes all those all those black gis that you put up we yeah. bought them <laughs> yeah <laughs> put them up we we wear black as our style and these are great gis these are awesome yeah we so. did we did pretty well on the black ones like we, we gotta we gotta do a new batch um yeah uh, but the minimums on on those are a little a little rough. I've got the still got the other uniforms, the other new uniforms in the other room that I still have to deal with. So, um, should we should we kick you back over and and go on to our last segment and then end this shindig? Um, or is there sure. More, more to say? Actually, mm -hmm. there is. You know, we talked about and I, and I want everybody to know this that. Um, Part of the reason we're announcing this now is because it gives us the opportunity next episode to do some different and fun things, you know, kind of in in celebration and retrospect, best of, highlights, whatever you want to call it. So I'm looking forward to the things that we come up with for that so we can go out on the highest of possible notes. Yeah. So you can uh... – <laughs> we're not – we're live, so I can't really hide what I want to communicate with you here, but uh... – um, I can go back to the other side and we can finish off with something else. Um, yeah. or you can, yeah, you know, I don't want to end on this. Okay. You'll have to give me a minute to scroll through because we, the stuff that I'm going to use, I skipped. So, okay. I'll I will. A second. I'll blabber. Sounds good. I'll see you I'll on the blabber. other side. All right. All right. So yeah, don't, don't be too sad. I'm not going to have an excuse for being late to work on the first Tuesday every month now. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you can. You can just, I don't know, watch reruns. Here's another book. I've got three. I've got a pile. I've got a pile of books. You know, guy who writes book, books has a pile of books. So this is, um, this is, this is my interview with, with Grandmaster June Rhee. And uh, ended up in conversation via email with someone who started training with June Reed. Told me he told me some great stories. This, this gentleman is older, and um, first met Bruce Lee in like '63 or something. Bought a book from him that 
I think it was it was like one of those like tiny self published sort of things, uh, and he really liked Junri and thanked me for the for the interview and um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna autograph that one and send it to him. We've got a bunch of those things up, you know, just trying to flesh out the books, 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 books. Let's do some books. Uh, Gabe's got a couple more topics from Facebook, uh, or let's do those. Let's save uh, pet peeves monologue for next time that's that'll be fun what's the most random martial arts compliment i've ever received Ooh. um so there there are a number of weird things that have happened because of the the show because of martial arts radio but um, that's not i don't consider that so much martial arts as as professional um most random martial arts compliment I've ever made, I've ever received. I've had a couple people who are not martial artists say that they are not surprised that I am a martial artist. Something about the way I carry myself. So I, I'd say, I'd chalk, I'd say that. Jenny says, books, books, books. Uh, Jenny, Jenny is, uh, Jenny's in charge of books. Andrew answers the same question. I was in a tournament once competing in black belt forums. I did a very traditional Sai Kata. All the other competitors, much younger, did extreme martial arts style bow or kama. After the event was over, the head judge came up and told me privately that I was the only competitor there that knew how to use my weapon. Wow. it's quite the compliment. Uh, Gabe, at a tournament once, I was a green belt and took second in weapons bow to a girl who was a brown belt. I had an old man, not a judge, but longtime black belt, come up to me afterwards and tell me I didn't win because I, because I wasn't a cute girl, but that I was welcome to accompany him to any cowboy bar as long as I brought my stick. <laughs> that is that is a, a wonderful and random compliment. Matt has two, both at tournaments. My brother and I went to an open tournament without our instructor and wore unmarked uniforms. After competing in forms, some guy we had never met came over, shook my hand, and asked if I was Marvel's boy, my instructor. He knew my instructor by my performance. In my eyes, it was a compliment. I completely agree. That is an amazing compliment. Um, I have been told that I do forms sim... I've been told in the past that I have done forms similar to my first instructor, one of my first instructors, which if you ever saw her do forms uh, is an amazing compliment. One time after competing as a red belt, a senior master told me I was the future of martial arts. About a year later, he was the master of my, my black belt test. We've been friends since. That's a great compliment. I like it. If you could choose any two characters, if you could choose any two characters from any movie, show, video game, etc., to face off in a fight, who would you choose? Oh, oh, that's so hard. All right, let's say Chuck Norris in Walker, Texas Ranger versus Daredevil. Uh, Matt says Wesley Snipes from Blade versus Michael Jai White from Blood and Bone. Winter Soldier versus Killmonger. Punisher from the Netflix series versus John Wick versus Brian Mills from Taken. Jason says Wile E. Coyote and Harry Crumb. Ooh, getting creative with that. What movie title best describes your training? Um, hmm. Let's see what other people said. Andrew says, after class, it would be tie hard. Jared says, a beautiful mind. There's always search for reality, and half the time I'm having conversations in my head. Jenny says, Braveheart. Gabe says, Gladiator. Sometimes I'm on top of my game. Sometimes I'm in the dumps. And sometimes I train like my family has just been killed. I'm trying to come up with a comedic response, uh, but it's not. I'm not coming up with anything that's, that's funny. I'm fading. So I think we're going to end it. I think it's a good place. I want to thank everybody for watching, for listening. Uh, Stacy says Mulan and uh... okay. I'm not quite getting that, um... and I'm chalking it up to me being tired. So 
<laughs> if you didn't get enough of me being tired here at the end, you can join me for First Cup tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on YouTube. But anyway, uh, thank you, everybody. Th this has been fun. Gabe and I have had a number of conversations about the end of this show. And I'm excited for what's coming next. There are some great things coming for both of us, personally and professionally. And sometimes change happens. Well, all the time change happens. Change continually happens, whatever, however you want to call it. So thank you. Stay tuned. Make sure you are following the event for the final episode. And you're paying attention to all the communications because there will be some great stuff. And I would love your help and involvement in celebrating what we've done over the last 17, soon to be 18 episodes. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you, those of you in the chat. Take care, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>